Today on Pappy Plus Parks, I'm going to be sharing with you the practically perfectly packed park bag. Welcome to Pammy Plus Parks. I am Pammy, your plus size fairy godmother, bringing you all the magic Disney and Florida has to offer plus size people. Well, today I was doing some chores around the house and I thought I would take a little break and finally share with you something you guys have been asking me for a year. You've been trying to find out what I carry in my park bag. Well, what I carry in my park bags into the Disney parks is the same stuff I carry anywhere I travel in the US. I'm gonna share everything with you, all of my tips and tricks to have the most perfectly packed bag with all the key essentials that will get you through a busy day of travel. Let's get started. As you can see, this bag is long enough to go across my body. Let me tell you a little bit about my measurements so you can see if this bag is going to work for you. I'm five foot four, I weigh 350 pounds, I wear US women sizes 30, 32, or a 4X, 5X. So even though I'm a really, really large woman, I find that a bag that's small like this with a nice long strap works really well for me. Let's take a look at the dimensions of the bag so you can see how big this bag is. And then I'm gonna show you everything that's inside of it. You'll be astounded at how much stuff I can fit in this bag. And even though there's a lot of stuff in there, it's still lightweight and manageable. Well, let's dig into my bag. Let's take some measurements of my favorite Disney Park bag. The bag is approximately 10 inches across. The height of the bag is about eight inches. Now let's measure the gusset or the actual width of the bag. It's only about two and a half inches wide. Even for such a small bag, there's tons of room in here for lots of stuff. And the fact that it's fabric means that it will mold itself to whatever you place inside. The fact that there's no dividers in this bag and there's no liner means there's actually more room and more flexibility to put a variety of things inside of it. Let's go ahead and measure the strap of this bag. I find that it's very comfortable and it fits my body perfectly. And I'd like to see if I can give you that measurement so you'll know if a bag like this will fit you well. Looks like the strap is just about 51 inches, give or take. Now it's time to take a look at every single thing that I put into this little bag. Let's get started. What I like to put in here are my earplugs. Earplugs come in handy when you're watching fireworks and if you're like me and you have a sensitivity to really loud noises, these will come in handy. If you tend to get overwhelmed in crowds and really noisy, busy areas, you will really appreciate having a pair of earplugs in your bag. I also like to have a couple of hairpins and a couple of hair ties. Now the next area I like to fill is that little pocket. It's perfect for taking my ID and placing everything I need in there. It's very easy to get at for myself. I just flip this open, it's right there. I thumb through and I find what I need. Another essential for the day is a pill box like this one. Inside of it, you put just the medications that you need for the day. I do have a little stock, a supply in here of things like Imodium, two different kinds of it, Advil, Aleve, different things like that. If you take supplements, vitamins, or if you have any prescription medication, take what you need for the day and put it in your pill box. And you can just toss that right in your bag. It's plastic and it's waterproof. You might already know that Disney does not sell gum because it gets all over benches and sidewalks and it's a huge mess. So I like to respect the fact that Disney doesn't sell gum and I bring in my own mints. I love icebreakers because of the container. It's nice, it's big, it holds a lot of mints, plenty of mints for you to share with everyone in your party. Those mint containers are so nice that you can actually repurpose them. And that's what I've done in this case. If you pop it open, you'll see I've got a bunch of Tums and antacids in there. So I make sure I have a supply of these in my bag. And again, because it's plastic, it's pretty much waterproof. Um, a lot of people will bring a roll of Tums in, but, the, but if, it, if it's in your bag and it's not in plastic and it gets wet, you could have issues. So that container's perfect. 
I also like to bring a handful of cough drops because the air indoors in some of the rides and attractions can be very dry and they can cause a dry cough. These things come in super handy, especially during allergy season when your sinuses might get sort of raw. These are the perfect thing to pop in your mouth to kind of get your sinuses clear. Speaking of allergies, I do have a little bit of airborne allergies and occasionally an inhaler will come in handy. Um, if you're a larger person who sometimes has difficulty breathing, before your trip, see your doctor and ask them if an inhaler will be something that will work well for you to help you breathe better in the parks when you're doing a lot of walking. One of the best ways to maintain good health is to keep your hands clean and using hand sanitizer is a great way to do that. I love this tiny palm sized version of hand sanitizer. You can often find it in a three pack in a drugstore or like one of those big box stores like Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and many other drugstores. What's great about this is you can refill it as you need it during your trip and only take in what you need. When this bottle is full, um, it probably takes Mark and I a couple of months to get through it believe it or not now you can get your breath fresh with mints but um, sometimes you need a little extra help and these toothpickers are fantastic again this is something you can get at a big box store or a drug store and it's actually got a little bit of dental floss in it right in here and then on the end you have a little uh, dental tool that's gonna help you get into cracks and crevices and clean your teeth properly and get your gums and teeth nice and sparkling clean. I really like to have a couple of these on hand during our trips and visits to make sure that our teeth are looking their best. Looks like I have a little bit of breakage on this nail here and I just need to uh, take care of that. Yeah, um, a nail file is something that can come in super, super handy on your trip. And one like this with the pointed tip is going to be handy if you need it to get packages open, poke a hole in something. I, I can't even tell you how many times I've actually used that and needed it. Um, I like this one in particular because it folds down really small and the blade of the tip of the nail file are covered so you don't get your hand poked when you reach in your bag. Another thing I found endlessly helpful in the park is a tiny pair of nail clippers. Believe it or not, nail clippers can cut through plastic containers, they can clip loose threads, and of course you can deal with hangnails and fingernails that need trimming on the fly. Sometimes you just break a nail and you need something. These things come in super, super handy, and I recommend getting a little tiny pair like this to toss in your bag. If you drive to the parks like I do, I like to bring in my car key, of course, but I leave the house keys inside the car, uh, but I don't wanna bring that big bulky set of keys in with me. I keep things streamlined and I just bring the car key in. Another small item that I find super helpful is an eyeglass polishing cloth. This works great on my phone. I use it on my camera. I can see it's seen better days. Also, I need a new one. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can use it on your phone, on the camera lens, on your phone, on your actual camera lens, and you can use it on your eyeglasses and sunglasses. So if you wear glasses like I do, you really need to have one of these. You could usually get these um, at an eyeglass store. So if you go to Visionworks or something like that, they usually sell these and you can buy them. Here's a key personal care item for women. I find that you never know if you're gonna need these or not. You can either bring in, whether they're sanitary napkins or tampons or pads, maxi pads. You know, you wanna bring those into the park with you if you think you're going to need them. I like to put them in a clear bag like this because uh, they're protected from water rides and they're protected from rain. But because it's in a clear bag, it, there's nothing that security has to unzip. They can see exactly what this is inside your bag and they'll be able to get through your bag quicker. So don't be worried or ashamed about having people see that you're using tampons or even incontinence pads or period pads. Everybody knows that people use these. It's no big deal. Just throw them in your bag. Now here is my secret weapon. <laughs> Inside of this little snack bag are 12 baby wipes folded into squares. I took them out of the package and I put them in this to make them a little more streamlined. Baby wipes can be used for a lot of different things. Let me tell you a little bit more about this. All right, let's talk about something people don't wanna talk about, and that's personal cleanliness. Uh, there's two ways you can achieve that at Disney or anywhere that you travel, and one is through baby wipes. And, you know, I just got these from Walmart. It's a portable pack of baby wipes. Uh, unfortunately, this portable pack of baby wipes will take up half the space in my bag. And it's pretty heavy because it's full of wet cloth. I don't really wanna carry this around all day long. 
Another way you can stay clean is through medicated wipes. Um, these are, again, a Walmart brand of, it's like a version of Preparation H personal wipes. And they're used for your bum. <laughs> but you can use it anywhere in your nether regions if you're having any sort of irritation. Uh, it's got uh, witch hazel in it and some other things that will kind of calm any rashes or burning or redness or irritation to your skin. Um, and they'll make you feel nice and fresh after you go potty. So consider these. I often bring both with me. Um, this for my personal hygiene needs to keep myself fresh and clean and comfortable. And I'll mark, I'll, I'll fold them up into a little pack like this, put it in a little sandwich snack, or not a sandwich bag, but this is a snack bag. I'll put it in a snack bag and take just 12 wipes, which will be enough for Mark and I to get through a day at the parks, actually more than enough. Um, that should serve an entire family of four for a day. But uh, I'll put a, like a, a little uh, W on it for, the WC, you could put WC on it, you could put B for bathroom, B for booty, whatever you want on the bag, right on it, an indelible marker so you can tell the difference between the two types of wipes that you carry. Now the baby wipes are fantastic for a lot of different things and keeping yourself clean. Baby wipes can be used after you've had a sticky snack and you just want to get that off your hands. Um, I found baby wipes to be, I don't know, for some reason when they're in my bag, they stay nice and cool. And if I get super, super hot and I want to cool off, I will take out a baby wipe and wipe my face off and get the salty sweat off my face in the summertime. So they're great for that. They're great for cleaning up your kid's face. They're great for cleaning your hands. And and on really busy days and the park is really full and you go into a quick service and you want to use a table to eat and the table hasn't been wiped down yet, you can knock out a couple of those baby wipes and wipe down the table and clean the table off. So you can see why you want to differentiate between your different baggies of wipes as the ones that you use in the bathroom and the baby wipes that you can use on tables, on chairs, on your hands, on your face. You definitely want to mark them so you can tell them apart if you're bringing two different types of wipes. But again, don't bring these giant, can you imagine if you brought both of these with you in the park and you had two giant packs of these wipes and then what if somebody in your party needs it? You're gonna hand them this giant like alarm yellow thing to go to the bathroom with and they're gonna feel like really self-conscious walking into the bathroom with that. It's a lot easier to just hand them a little pack like this that they can slip in their pocket, go do what business they need to do and come back and return it to you to put in the bag. So by using your little handy dandy folded up snack size bag, you're saving space and you're saving face. I like to make sure that I don't get burned on my trip, but I don't want to carry a giant bottle of sun cream. So this bottle is actually a travel size bottle of conditioner that I bought in the travel section at Walmart. I took the conditioner and dumped it out. I rinsed out the bottle and I put sunscreen in it. Some of the travel bottles I found didn't have openings that were wide enough on the top to refill the sunscreen. So you want to look for something that you can unscrew like this with a nice wide opening in the top that's going to allow you to squeeze in more sunscreen or sun cream, whatever it is that you're using, and then screw it back on. This little travel size bottle has enough sunscreen in it for me to get by on six trips to Disney. So I imagine that a little sunscreen bottle like this is going to work great for a family of four or a family of six. You can just refill this every day as you need it and leave this giant bottle of sunscreen that's really heavy inside your hotel or resort or at home and take this instead. Shape. I do have a tendency to wash my hands a lot when I'm at the parks and I find the soap inside the Disney parks is very drying and that's why I always make sure I have a small travel size tube of hand lotion. I do love the Gold Bond Healing Lotion but any lotion will do. Well, this tube of tinted lip balm has seen better days, um, but it's still got a lot of lip balm in there and it works great. This is Burt's Bees and um, I think the color is plum. Oh, it's fig, it's fig. And um, it's just a little bit of tint to it. It's got a little SPF, sorry, it's a little messy. Uh, it's just enough color to give me a little color in my lips, protect my lips from the sun and keep them from chapping. Now, Mark, on the other hand, does not want to wear a tinted lip balm, so I have like a chapstick or something like that, just clear for him. And sometimes I use this too. So it's always nice to have a little chapstick in there. It will protect you from burns and keep your lips from getting chapped.
I found this at the dollar store. It's just a little mirror. Um, it has a magnified side and a non-magnified side and allows you to kind of check your hair, your teeth, your lipstick, whatever. It's nice to have that in your bag. Another one of my essential objects that has seen better days is this Tide Pen. And basically what it is, is a, it's basically a stain removing pen. And you can just put that right in on the fabric on your clothes, rub it in, and it will take a stain out. You can even rinse it out and make sure the stain is completely gone if you rinse it out in the bathroom. But this is a great way to pre-treat a stain and prevent a strain, stain from getting worse. And I love it. I always carry one everywhere I go. And here is my last beauty go-to item, a comb. Not a brush. Um, a comb is very streamlined, very thin. It's easy to stick in your bag. It fits in there very easily. It gets the job done. It may not be the most ideal beauty tool, but it works. I also like to make sure I have a pen just in case. You're definitely going to want to bring your cell phone with you. Um, for me, I have the My Experience app on it. I'm able to shop on it. I pre-order food, I make reservations, I check on my fast passes, I look at wait times. My cell phone is invaluable, but for a lot of people, it's also their recording device. When I first started vlogging, this is the very phone that I used. And I had a vlogging kit that I brought with me. Let me show you my phone vlogging kit. Many of you may know that selfie sticks are banned in the park, but you can't can use a stability handle like this, something that fits in your hand like this and does not extend, is perfectly acceptable to use in the park. This one is really remarkable because it's got a little USB port and a micro USB port and it actually this little thing lights up here to tell you if it's charged. That's right, this stability handle is also a charger. So I would save myself having to pack extra chargers and things in my, my bag because this thing could charge my cell phone four or five times. Costs about $25, you can get it at walmart.com. I believe they sell them on Amazon as well. They're very lightweight. They make it easier to shoot with your cell phone if you're vlogging or taking pictures and they also act as a charger. Another key piece to my vlogging setup is this grip that holds the cell phone. Actually, let me show you this. It grips onto the phone just like that, and it screws into the handle just like this. And that's what I would use to vlog. So as you can see, the large part of the USB gets plugged into the handle and the small part gets plugged into the bottom of the camera so that it continually charges while I record. So there you have it. This is my entire vlogging setup when I first started vlogging and it all fits very easily inside of the bag. I think headphones can be very handy, especially if you are vlogging with your phone so you can go back and listen to the audio and make sure that your audio take came out great. And sometimes you just want to listen to a little music while you chill out somewhere to so make sure you have a pair of headphones stashed in your bag. Of course, last but not least, you want to make sure your magic band is in your bag as well. If it's not on your wrist, make sure it's in your bag. All right, let's have a look at this bag. As you can see, it's pretty well stock. Everything I need is in there and I can grab everything. And as you can see, if you look, there's tons of room up here. So if you needed to stash a small souvenir or a hat, or if it's a cold day and you want to put your scarf and your gloves and your cap in here, when you go indoors, it's still enough room. Um, I've also been able to put a rain poncho in here as well without any issues. So plenty of room for any extra little things that you feel you need. And the bag still doesn't weigh too much. And again, like I said before, one of the great things about it being fabric is it molds to the shape of whatever's in it and shifts as you need it. And this flap on the front is going to protect from rain. As long as you keep this side against your body, you have like a double layer protection with the flap on the top. It's easy open, easy close. I love this bag. As you can see, I really love it because <laughs> These wear marks on it are not signs of like, it hasn't been distressed. It, it, they didn't sell it to me this way. Um, they didn't sell it to me faded. <laughs> this dark blue color is what it used to be. And it's faded out to this because I have taken this all over the country and traveled everywhere with it. It is a fantastic bag. And I highly recommend a bag of this size or sort for your trip to Disney. That's it. That is my practically perfectly packed park bag. I've shared with you all my tips and tricks 
for having a nice lightweight, really well stocked bag that you can take anywhere, whether it's inside of a theme park or in your day-to-day -day travels and being a tourist anywhere in the US. Now it's time for you to go down into the comments and tell me all of your tips and tricks for packing the best possible travel bag. And if you'd like to see more videos like this where I kind of share some of my behind the scenes secrets, let me know that in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell here on YouTube so you don't miss any of the fantastic videos that we have on Pammy Plus Parks for plus size people and accessibility information throughout the Disney parks and Florida. Stick around here because I got a couple of extra videos that you might want to check out, especially if you love Disney.